All right, we are here today with Blake Patton. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Um, you've got some exciting news going on right now, and I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. Uh, for the folks who are not familiar with you, uh, can you just give us a little bit of an introduction for yourself and a little bit about your background and what you do? Sure. Uh, so, uh, Blake Patton. Uh, I'm managing partner and founder of TechSquare Ventures. Uh, we're an early stage venture firm. Uh, we, we invest out of two funds, our early stage fund and our uh, engaged fund. And um, we are based here in Atlanta in Technology Square and um, invest in enterprise and marketplace technology companies. Outstanding. So um, are you a native Atlantan by chance? You know, I feel like I am now. Uh, I grew up in North Carolina okay. and first moved to Atlanta to go to Georgia Tech. Uh, I actually came down, um, so so been here on and off since, uh, since 1989. Very cool. Now, I saw that you uh, were at Tech, and um, just so folks who don't understand sort of all of the magic that's coming out of Georgia Tech. Talk to me about just the school, and I know that you've had a long affiliation with ATDC, so just talk to me about, you know, what it means for Georgia Tech and having attended there and, and part of the startup ecosystem and innovation in Atlanta and the Southeast. Yeah. Boy, that, that's such a big topic. Um, you know, Georgia Tech uh, has been, you know, sort of a cornerstone um, uh, for, you know, for my life and my career, I, I first came down to tech, uh, came here on a, uh, actually on a swimming scholarship. Oh, wow. Um, and so I don't even know that I understood, uh, what a great decision I was making tech, but by, by landing here at Georgia tech, you know, it, I, it just opened my eyes, uh, from, from day one, when I landed there, you could tell it was a special place where, People thought bigger. It was about building things, uh, and I got all these amazing, unique uh, opportunities there. In fact, um, I, I was one of the first students uh, that they added to the president's advisory board during that period. And so, uh, you know, growing up in a small town in North Carolina, and all of a sudden got, getting to be in these meetings uh, with these amazing business leaders. You know, uh, people who ran Fortune 500 companies, luminaries like Andrew Young, uh, talking about Georgia Tech you know, in the city of Atlanta, 25 years from then, um, was just, you know, fascinating and eye-opening for me. It was the first time I really saw what it meant to think big. And so I think that's a lot of what captures um, uh, what, what makes Georgia Tech special. You know, it's, it's about thinking big. And so over the years, and especially in the last decade, you know, I, I was really fortunate to spend time as the uh, interim head at ATDC. Um, and, you know, during that time there, just got to really, that's really why I'm doing what I'm doing now. I got to meet all these amazing entrepreneurs, building companies across different um, technologies and business sectors, and got really to see all the activity uh, that was going on in terms of innovation across campus. And I think that's, I think that's a lot of what um, we're seeing is that, uh, you know, innovation and big company innovation and university research and startup, uh, uh, the startup community were kind of separate, separate activities. And what we're really seeing is that activity starting to come together uh, and overlap. And that's what's, that's just what's so exciting. So, you know, everything from the vision uh, that Georgia Tech had and, and you know, investing in and, and building out Technology Square uh, to be a hub of that activity um, has really accelerated connectivity uh, that sometimes, you know, we associate with other regional tech, with other tech hubs, leading tech hubs. You know, we've kind of accelerated that here now, and you know, Georgia Tech's been at the heart of it, and of course, uh, you know, first and foremost, the amazing talent uh, coming out of Tech. I'm I'm glad I went there when I did. I don't know if I could get in today. Um, I still teach an entrepreneurial finance class there, and I just continue to be amazed uh, at the quality of students. So we're we're um, I think you know, Georgia Tech and Tech Square is just kind of at the heart of that that innovation and bringing those ecosystems together. You've got the corporate innovation centers, you've got ATDC, um, you've got all of the student uh, entrepreneurship activities like CreateX, et cetera. Uh, and then you have um, uh, you know, the, the university research and the opportunity for commercialization. All of that is colliding and coming together. And that's, that's what we're excited about. We're kind of feel like we're in the middle of all that. 
Excellent. And, and that, I guess, can, uh, is a good segue to bring us to uh, the news. So this new fund that uh, you have and that you're announcing. So i um, like to get some information on that because I feel like that also kind of plays into this whole uh, scenario, especially for you and your story of being from North Carolina, going to Georgia Tech, staying near campus, um, engage as well, which we'll get into. But looking at how all of this, and I was looking at the notes about the fund and how it's really going to have some focus on Georgia and the Southeast. So tell us about this fund that you got going on. Yeah, so we are excited. We just uh, clo had our first close, um, 26 million towards our, our goal of 75 million on our uh, Tech Square Venture Fund 2. It's an early stage fund, as you said. Uh, we are uh, focused on uh, enterprise, so business to business, uh, and marketplace and platform technologies. Uh, we are very focused and very committed, very passionate about uh, the Southeast. Um, you know, we, when I started Tech Square Ventures, uh, it was really um, largely around that conviction that the this is one of the fastest growing innovation markets and the opportunity, you know, the, the, the level of investment, what didn't match the opportunity here. So uh, we continue to be focused on the Southeast, which us, for us kind of means, you know, from Texas to DC, uh, certainly here in our backyard in Atlanta. Um, and, uh, you know, the, um, we're going to, you know, start investing uh, immediately. You can, you, you know, if you, uh, have watched the companies we've invested in to date. Um, this is really us being able to level up and, and invest in these early stage companies, kind of seed in series A and, and stick with them. Um, and, and that's, you know, uh, that's what we've learned working with the companies uh, here, here locally is, you know, helping them get to that first couple million in revenue and being a partner in that journey, getting them to uh, that go to market stage and helping them with those strategies. And we've essentially built our whole platform around uh, helping entrepreneurs get access to customers and markets. And that's what we do uniquely well. Now, when you said one word that I liked is, you know, we have learned, and I guess that's three words, but uh, you talked about the learnings from this. So this is, you know, fun too. What, some, what are some of those things that you learn from going uh, from the first fund to the second fund? And how are you planning to apply those learnings as you, uh, as you said, immediately begin to invest? Yeah. Um, look, I think, I think obvious, but what you learn in spades, you know, we've invested in, in over 50 companies so far across both funds. So we've, we've got, we've gotten quite a bit of um, uh, experience and, you know, at the end of the day, we know we're investing in people. And we're no, and we know we're in, but we, we know we have to get the people right. We know we have to get the market opportunity and timing right. Um, and we know we have to be able to help uh, these companies, which for us means the go-to-market business model. And the and the thing I've just continued to learn over and over again um, is that it's really about uh, it's really about the the entrepreneur. It's really about partnering with these visionary entrepreneurs. Um, you know, having alignment with them in terms of what that vision, what those. Uh, key milestones are what success looks like and really um, uh, you know getting behind them and helping them what they need most so I, I think our biggest learning has been about people in terms of the in terms of the um, uh, you know the investment strategy you know our first fund our first fund was smaller um, and so one of the challenges we had is we could help them early on uh, but as they grew uh, we, we weren't you know they, they continue to need access to capital and we weren't always able to, you know, be as much of a partner as we wanted to through that journey. So that's part of why the, the larger fund size um, is so that we can, you know, we can help them in those seed and series A stages get to where they need to get so they can attract the venture and growth capital, um, uh, you know, from, from leading investors everywhere. And so a big part of what we want to be able to do uh, is be not just, you know, um, a, a, a first check, but to really be a partner through that phase of the journey. And that's, that's what we've designed this fund around. And talk about the partners, because uh, I do understand that those include Cox Enterprises, and I'll let you explain more, but just talk about the partnerships and what that brings to the table in terms of the leverage that that gives you as a fund for folks who may not realize how big of an impact it makes to have those types of uh, partners involved. Yeah. So, well, first, um, I think the 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 investors in the fund this this fund to date 
uh, really reflect what we talked about earlier, right? The, the um, wh why I'm excited about all this momentum in Atlanta. Uh, we've got some really forward thinking, amazing strategic uh, investors in this fund and in partners across the across tech square ventures, you know, so, uh, you know, we're just uh, super grateful and, and, and fortunate that, um, you know, companies like, uh, like Georgia Pacific and like Cox Enterprises have stepped up, right, to help uh, fuel this growth and help us uh, fill that fill that gap we talked about. Um, Invest Georgia, which is uh, the state's fund to fund program, has been an amazing anchor uh, investor, and that has helped us with uh, have have credibility and learn actually how to raise money from institutional investors, which has allowed us to be successful in going to others. And then other you know successful investors in town, people like um, John Hallett, people like Ashish Mystery and, and BLH Ventures. Um, so those are just some of them. Um, uh, of the investors in this fund, but what I think that really represents is, you know, is 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 this the, the sort of powerful momentum we're starting to see uh, in the Atlanta ecosystem, and uh, the fact that we can um, bring those partnerships to bear. In addition, uh, you know, Tech Square Ventures we're also the venture fund behind uh, the Engage program, uh, which is an innovation, you know, collaborative innovation and and um, corporate venture program, and in that. Uh, and that program and that fund, you know, we have 11 large corporate partners as well as Georgia Tech uh, and Invest Georgia. So across our whole platform, um, we've really built it with this connectivity in mind. And again, you know, we, we like to say that we're helping entrepreneurs with what they need most, uh, access to capital and markets. I mean, uh, um, access to customers and markets uh, in addition to capital. And so we've built this, this platform and we have these uh, partnerships. And so what that means is it gives, us, it gives us all sorts of advantages. For sure, it helps us spot emerging trends and focus kind of our sourcing and investing activity. Uh, it helps us as we diligence these investments to be able to go to these domain and market uh, experts and find out you know, really what they're thinking. Um, and then of course, it helps us help our entrepreneurs once we've invested by helping them get you know, customers, um, access to mentors and experts to inform strategy, uh, and in some cases, partnerships or distribution partnerships. And so in Atlanta specifically, uh, we've seen, I'd say, at least I've seen over the past decade, um, a, lot more, a lot more investment just sort of out in the open. It seemed for a long time, and I was hearing this from friends of mine, that you know, the investment and the level of investment was possibly lower because the investment community and the venture capitalists, they really weren't yet, I, I guess, used to the kinds of dollars that fly around in your Silicon Valley and other places where investments are just kind of more of the broad game. So with Atlanta and the Southeast, the Triangle, um, other cities and states who are being represented well, I, I continue to be very impressed by Chattanooga. And I'm, you know, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama, and I uh, used to drive through either Chattanooga or Birmingham to visit family. And so watching those two cities come to the places where they are, just in the sense of innovation on a broad spectrum, looking around the Southeast, there's just a lot more activity. Um, what do you see as being the driving force that has even made it possible for Tech Square Ventures and an Engage to be here and to be a yeah. big reason for all of this investment activity to continue and to grow? Yeah, uh, really good question. Um, and, and, and while I appreciate the way it's phrased and would love to say that uh, part of the reason, I think it's, I think it's exactly the opposite. I think it's about um, what's happened in the Southeast is we've built a really good critical mass of just amazing entrepreneurs. And what that, what that has meant over the years is a couple things, a couple trends coming together. First, uh, we have this base of amazing world-class research universities that attracts incredible talent from all over the world. Um, second, uh, you know, this isn't Atlanta's first rodeo. You know, I'm, I'm sort of a product of the dot-com days. Uh, I was, um, fortunate to be part of you know, uh, IXL and, you know, where we grew that company and took it public. And, um, and so there's a lot of uh, folks like us, I sometimes joke and say the dot-com kids are in their forties and fifties. And so we're now able to have a little bit uh, more outsized impact. But what, what that also has meant is that we've built over the years, a critical mass of success, successful startups that have come out of the Southeast that have left behind 
um, uh, basically really strong, talented uh, individuals we can build management teams around. And so that as we've built that critical mass of talent, experience, and the ability to put together management teams, that's, I think, what has really fueled uh, the growth here. And of course, there's all the other macro trends, right? You know, the, 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 the um, you know, going from, you know, the PC days to where we are now and, you know, what it used to cost to launch a company to what it costs now. Uh, you've seen um, uh, since 2010, you've seen, you know, governments be folk more focused on promoting entrepreneurship, you know, as, as they've realized uh, it's a leading driver for jobs. You know, the, there was a Kaufman report in 2010 that said, you know, when it comes to job creation in the U.S., uh, startups aren't everything. They're the only thing. And it highlighted um, that over the past 35 years, most net new job creation has come from startups. So you've had governments focused on it. And you've had universities focused on it because the students um, have become increasingly interested in that. So that's what it took to attract the best talent, uh, but also because they need their commercialization efforts uh, to be to be successful. So, you know, when you look across the Southeast, um, you know, what I think the, 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 the key ingredient that's really accelerated in the past, you know, five or six uh, years here uh, is the connectivity. And so some of that connectivity that happened either more naturally or has been around in other tech hubs. I spent part of my career in, you know, in Boston and New York and uh, lived in London for a little while. Um, and, you know, certainly in the Valley, you see these big tech companies are naturally connected to the startup ecosystem, not because those company leaders do anything different uh, than they do here uh, in the Southeast, but just because the people uh, who work there, you know, move in and out from the big tech companies to the small companies. So here, our, our companies are across industries, uh, and sometimes that collision wasn't as natural. Uh, but what's great now is that not only is that collision happening, um, but, that it, but that we have this amazing advantage. Uh, and, and if you think about the, um, the opportunity to build uh, companies and discover, and discover problems to solve by, by collaborating across the variety of enterprises we have here, you know, I think that's what makes us unique. I think that's our strength. But the short answer to your question is the talent, the level of talent in the Southeast in the past 10 years um, has just increased dramatically. So that puts the challenge on you, I guess, and your in the broader, broader community uh, and everyone you're working with on the fund. Um, what are you looking for? And you know, what do those uh, startups look like that are gonna be considered and are gonna get investment from this new fund? Yeah. So of course we look at, you know, lots of uh, things you can imagine while we're looking for the companies, but what, what we've definitely learned is there's kind of three things we have to get right. Um, one is, you know, we're looking to back really strong visionary entrepreneurs. You know, what, what I've, what we've definitely learned is that we're betting on their vision and their ability to execute that vision. So that's, you know, that's number one, probably number one, two, and three, but number one is people. Um, you know, we're looking for, uh, for, we have to get the market opportunity and the, and that includes the timing, right? So, you know, it has to be, you know, we have to be right about the, um, uh, the, the need in the market. Um, and then sometimes you can be right, but the timing matters. So we're, we're looking to help build these companies so that, you know, we hit that inflection point, you know, two to four years out, uh, so that that company is in a position to grow, uh, at the right time. Um, and then lastly, we're really looking for companies, um, that we can help. So for us, that means business model occurring uh, or transactional revenue models um, that, that our network that we just that we described earlier, that our strategic relationships and our platform can help accelerate uh, their growth. So we love enterprise B2B uh, companies. Um, we love uh, um, marketplace and platform technologies and we love, you know, university spin outs. And but we look at those across sectors. So we've if you look at our um, portfolio of startups we've invested in to date, you know, you see everything from AI and machine learning to, um, you know, to uh, uh, um, SaaS software companies, uh, logistics. Um, so we invest across sectors, uh, but that's, that's really our focus. And um, we like to invest at the early stages. Uh, that means um, uh, mostly seed and series A uh, stage companies. Um, and that's because, like I said, we're very focused on helping companies develop and then execute their go-to-market strategies. So we like to help them get their products to market. Great. 
And uh, you mentioned timing. So we are obviously in a very uh, unique time, uh, not only in Atlanta and the Southeast, but nationally and globally. Uh, there is obviously the challenges of the novel coronavirus. There are obviously the social issues that a lot of us uh, may have known and seen, and some of us are maybe becoming more aware of today. And those even, I think it's fair to say, have some of the conversation built into them about access to capital. So looking at this time in particular, does any of what you're seeing involve uh, plans and strategies for Tech Square Ventures Fund too? Um, and does any of that personally impact you? Yeah, look, these are definitely um, extraordinary times. And I think, uh, I, I think there's several um, ways that, you know, we think about it. So, of course, we have to look at, um, uh, at, at our existing portfolio and the, new, and the new companies we invest in and come up with sort of times appropriate plans. You know, what, what does the next 12 to 18 months look like? Um, can they make meaningful, you know, progress that actually creates value in the business um, and, and help them put together plans and scenarios against that? But, but look, I think this is what, this is what we really encourage all, all of our entrepreneurs. Times like this are actually, um, can be uh, really challenging for startups and they're certainly challenging for the leaders of those startups, but these are also uh, unique opportunities. Um, these are opportunities, you know, one, one uh, uh, benefit for startups is, you know, they have more under their control than perhaps a company that's already scaled to a certain size had become very dependent, you know, on revenue or, or, or customers, uh, they, they have, they're less exposed to that, which gives them a chance to kind of go heads down and close the, whatever gaps they know exist. So oftentimes it's a product gap. You know, it's time to go heads down, focus on closing that gap with whoever the market leader or incumbent or whatever you need to do to get to the point uh, where customers will adopt your market. And I think in these times, startups can make tremendous um, progress and focus and, you know, great companies are built in good times and bad. And so I think what we'll see out of this, number one, um, is some companies that use this time really intentionally and wisely and, and basically leapfrogged, um, you know, their, their position in the marketplace. Uh, number two, for sure, there'll be some opportunities where this will drive, uh, you know, innovation, right? Meaning that they're, you know, the market will change, the way we live and do business will change, and that will drive opportunities for new startups or, or, or changes for the products and services in existing startups. Um, I, I don't know that we necessarily um, uh, will chase those as much as make sure that our startups plans uh, are in line, you know, with the realities um, that, uh, of those changes. And across our portfolio, we've had some companies benefit and we've had some companies, right, that where it's where these are headwinds. Um, but, you know, we had companies that we'd invested in before all this. For example, one company that does LED, uh, Vital VO does. Uh, antimicrobial LED lighting, so for disinfecting surfaces. Um, so obviously this became a headwind, I mean, a, a, a tailwind for them and, and they're benefiting enormously from, you know, from this. So, uh, but yeah, in terms of investing, um, look, I think that, uh, I think that the, um, uh, I think that this is generally a good time, you know, to, to be launching a new investment. If the markets, uh, are, are going to be slow having that happen during your investment period for your new company so that you're in healthy markets later when you're, when you're, when those companies have grown a little bit, you depend on a healthy economy for them to grow quickly and to have strong exit opportunities. Um, so from a timing perspective for the new fund, this is, you know, um, while it may not be good, it's, 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 you know, it, it's, um, I think, I, I don't think it impacts us uh, uh, negatively timing. And, you know, look, um, mostly it's about, uh, mostly it's about the, the teams and the entrepreneurs that can, that have a plan, again, to create value during this 12 to 18 months, not just survive. Those are the startups we're looking to invest in. Excellent. Um, so for you going forward and um, just in general, the rest of this year, uh, is, I'm pretty sure it's planned out. So in the midst of all of the work that will be done, in the midst of the meetings and the Zooms and all of the uh, just carrying on and making sure that you're having the greatest impact as you launch, um, what are you going to be doing just to 
kind of make sure that there's a balance here because even the ways of working, I have to imagine that as a fund, you know, you're going to be pretty busy. And a lot of us are busy doing all types of different, uh, looking at different arrangements of how we go about doing things. And with technology and innovation, we're looking to that to sort of lead a way forward for this quote unquote new normal that we're going through. So how are you specifically looking at this time for how you can be in a leadership position to show some of that innovative thinking for not only Tech Square Ventures and Engage, but just yourself and just how you're looking at, you know, what about Blake Patton, you know, like, you know, these, these books behind you, they don't read themselves. So even how are you getting to work? How are you as a leader just going about your life now that we are in this time of transition? Yeah. You know, when, the, when this first hit, um, one of the first things I did with our team is I laid out sort of four, five guidelines of how we were going to operate um, through this. And at the top of that list is I said, look, we need to remember who we are. We need to remember our why and remember, we need to remember our core values. Um, you know, our, our why hasn't changed, our goals haven't changed, but we're going to radically have to change our tactics. But we need to do so anchored, you know, in who we are. Uh, and, and so for us, you know, our, our core values of our service and stewardship, um, those are perfect for a venture firm. You know, we, we care about, um, uh, you know, serving our entrepreneurs and being good stewards of the trust that they've put in us and certainly the trust that our investors have put in us. Uh, so as we went, move forward, we did so with that in mind. And then, this, and then I think we, it, it caused us um, actually to reflect in a really positive way um, on, you know, we had built this platform and a big part of the platform was about these relationships, these strategic relationships. And so we had designed a lot of activity that was in-person activity that drove those relationships. And so we had to really think hard about what that meant. And what we've discovered um, is, is, you know, we've been able to um, move a lot of that activity into these new, you know, virtual, not new, but these virtual uh, and remote formats and using, you know, video conferencing and different formats. And in some cases, it's increased uh, the connectivity and participation because especially across our corporate partners, we're able to engage more people uh, inside those uh, corporate partners. Uh, they have um, uh, more interest in connecting with and helping the startups uh, than they did um, than they did before because we can connect across that organization. We don't have to find a time when they can jump in a car uh, and come down to Midtown Atlanta. Uh, so we we found some uh, you know some ways to, to to operate that way. Look, I think for us as a venture firm, almost everything we do, we can do in this kind of uh, I, I won't call it new normal. I keep telling everybody I don't know what I don't know what the new normal is, but this ain't it. Um, but this interim normal and um, and the uh, uh, but, but the biggest challenge for us has been, you know, creating new activity. So getting to know a new startup that we're looking at for investment, uh, launching a new program, you know, finding new investors for the fund, whatever that is. Um, those things are hard without, you know, having, you know, we're all having to learn how to, how to do those and get comfortable, uh, doing those in these, in these remote formats. So, you know, it, um, we've been, most of the you know new companies that we're looking at, a lot of them we'd already had interaction or we knew the entrepreneurs. I think that's one benefit of the Southeast. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's a small enough community that that uh, you know we we know we know uh, uh, most of the folks in the technology community. So that has been a benefit. Um, but yeah, I think we're all getting used to how to do new new things remotely. But you know, just I'm so so blessed with our team. Our team just didn't miss a beat. I mean, we, uh, I think it was uh, March 13th or 16th or something, we had our first, you know, our, the way our company works is we have a weekly meeting uh, every week and we, um, in person. And then, so that was the first one we had to do remotely. And, you know, I think everybody just shifted gear amazingly well. And, and obviously that helped that we'd already been working together. So, yeah, I think the fact that we sat down in the beginning of this and said, here's the five things we're going to do. Uh, I gave the team a lot of clarity around that. And one of those things was we're going to pause and reflect and see what we want to do different. Um, and I think the fact that uh, that this is an innovation community, so everybody's been pretty innovative in how to move things forward. 
And um, so I'm, you know, put me in the optimistic, um, uh, in the optimistic camp, especially in the past 45 days. Uh, I feel like, um, you know, there was a lot of initial um, uncertainty. And, uh, you know, in the startup community, everything from the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, PPP loans to, um, you know, how long is this going to last to what's my runway to what can I, what are my customers going to do? Uh, caused a tremendous amount of upfront um, uncertainty, but, you know, really quickly, I've been amazed at the resiliency of our portfolio and of the Atlanta startups that I know, how quickly they came up with, you know, kind of red, green, blue, I mean, red, green, uh, yellow plans on, on how to operate as things unfolded. And I feel like in the last 45 days, while we still have all this enormous uncertainty, um, folks have adapted to a good degree. And, and things are moving forward. So, so, you know, we are open for business. We want to make new investments. We want to find new uh, companies and, and teams, but yeah, we're going to have to work a little harder um, to get comfortable with some of the things that we used to do uh, through due diligence that we have to do differently, differently now. Right. And last question for you. Um, being someone you mentioned that this isn't your first rodeo, you were around for dot .com. Um, and that was a shaky time. And now we are in another time where people are kind of looking around and maybe some things are unfamiliar. If you had to give someone a, a takeaway bit of, you know, some of that optimism that you say that you still have to push forward with, um, what would you tell someone who is looking at this and maybe it's not their first time around and they're kind of wondering what's their North Star? What's your optimistic uh, takeaway? Yes, good question. I, so, um, you know, I've led companies through or during, you know, the dot com crash, through, you know, nine eleven, through the two thousand eight financial crisis, and now this. And certainly, this is this is uh, this is very different, both in in scope and and duration and uncertainty. Um, but I think it's the one thing I, I mentioned earlier. I think the 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 very first thing I would tell a leader that they have to do is get their team really refocused on the why, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? Um, it, it, you know, everyone, you know, when, when, again, when this, when this happened, I told our team, look, I know you have to figure out, you know, how to take care of your parents. You have to figure out how to get the fridge stocked. You've got to figure out, you know, a lot of things right now. So we're going to, you know, give you time and space to do that, but then we're going to get back at it. And so what I would tell entrepreneurs, my, my, single you know most important piece of advice is to keep your team focused on your why help them understand that the objectives haven't changed just the tactics have um, and then you have to communicate 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 any crisis you have to communicate this one's you know even more difficult because we have to you know over communicate because we're making up for um, some of the the the, the lack of in-person communication so those two things are my biggest um, the, the biggest thing is I'd say, but again, uh, great companies are built in good times and bad. I think what was it? Um, uh, I hope I get this right. I think it was Andy Grove who said, you know, um, uh, you know, good companies, uh, you know, survive a, a crisis and great companies thrive through a crisis. And I think that's true. There's lots of opportunities um, to outpace your competitors. Uh, if you, you know, if you hunker down and stay focused on, you know, what's important. And then the last piece of advice I'd say is uh, a lot of times you get reaction. You, you want to react to everything that's going on. And when you're building a company, you have to remember that longer term, you know, perspective. Uh, ho you know, hopefully, uh, like we said earlier, right, this isn't the, necessarily the new normal. So you're not really trying to, to optimize what you're building for six months from now. You're optimizing what you're building, you know, for the future. And so as you react to everything going on around you and your strategy, you know, you have to keep that longer term view in mind, but, you know, it's, um, uh, uh, you know, we've, we've been through tough periods before good companies are built, you know, good times and bad. And we've got, um, uh, you know, if you stay focused on why you're doing what you're doing, keep grounded in your core values. Hopefully it's not the first time your team members have heard those words come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, then you can keep everyone focused and you can, you know, you can do something remarkable. And, and look, I, I the last thing I'd say is that what you're doing, if you're an entrepreneur listening to this, now what you're doing is more important than ever. You know, what a, re what a recovery means 
you know, in one word is jobs. And that's what you're doing, right? You're building companies, you're, 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 you're giving people, you know, um, uh, meaningful, high paying uh, jobs that, that, uh, that they're excited to do. And so I think, I think, um, you know, for the entrepreneurs, you know, your success is important, you know, to our collective success and to Atlanta's success. So what you're doing is more as important as it has, has ever been. Solid advice from Blake Patton, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Blake, where can people keep up with you and uh, where do they need to go from here? Because you've got work to do. So where can they follow you? Yeah. So um, obviously our website, uh, www.techsquareventures.com. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter at Blake Patton. Um, and our, our Tech Square VC is also tw Twitter. Uh, and, um, you know, you can, you can go on the website and we're easy to reach. Uh, we've got all of, our, all of our social media and email and everything else on the website. Excellent. All right. Uh, and I guess go Yellow Jackets, huh, <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> go Jackets for sure. <laughs> all right. Thank you again so much for taking this time to talk to us. And best of luck to you and everyone at Tech Square Ventures and Engage. And we will talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks for all you guys do for the startup community and telling our story. Happy to do it.